Audiences are drawn to mysterious characters like the man with no name, Snake Plissken, or Heath Ledger's Joker because the less we know about them, the more intriguing they become. A backstory can get in the way of all that mystique, and as we all know, the idea of somebody is often more satisfying than the reality of them. Just ask the few people who have unfortunately dated me. This vagueness is absolutely no use to an actor when they're preparing a role though, so some invent a biography to make life easier. These often aren't supposed to ever be revealed to the public, and they can't always be technically considered canon, but they do play an important role in how a character is brought to life on screen. That said, it's still real interesting when these biographies are revealed, because they're often far more bizarre than anything a fan could dream up. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 movie characters with fascinating backstories you didn't know about. Number 10. Mad Max Fury Road Fury Rosa has good reason to hate a Morton Joe. Mad Max Fury Road was in development so long that not only was George Miller able to come up with a complete biography for each character, he was even able to write a couple of sequel scripts too that will probably never happen. That dedication might be hard to believe though, considering just how light Fury Road is on exposition, but each character clearly has a lot of personal baggage, and Furiosa's deep-seated hatred for Immortan Joe in particular is obvious. All the movie really reveals was that she was kidnapped when she was young, but Charlize Theron and Miller talked extensively about Furiosa's background, deciding that she was stolen to be a bride for a Morton Joe. However, when he realized she couldn't give birth, she was cast out. Then she hung around with the war pups and became a mechanic before eventually becoming one of Joe's best warriors. She lost her arm during a battle for him and finally turned it in when she became the protector of the five wives and saw just how he treated them like meat and how she too could have been treated the same way. Number 9. Batman Begins How Thomas Wayne Met Alfred Michael Caine, the great man that he is, likes to draw up a character biography for every role he plays. So when he took on Batman's Alfred, he decided to draw on his own background, not caring all that much about the comics. He revealed in an interview that Thomas Wayne met Alfred while visiting an SAS camp. Al had been wounded in combat and was unfit to fight, but instead of going back to civilian life, he chose to head up the sergeant's mess instead, where he learned to perform all the duties of a butler. He and Thomas formed a friendship, and Wayne later hired him to become the family butler. Chris Nolan himself liked this backstory so much, he later incorporated Alfred's background into The Dark Knight, where he recounts a story of a crazed thief in Burma, becoming one of that movie's most iconic scenes. This shared history explains why Thomas would entrust Bruce with the butler following his death though, and why he's able to knock clean out the occasional henchman if need be. Number 8. Escape from New York, the president has interesting parents. Look, you don't need me to tell you that Escape from New York is the awesome cult movie that introduced the world to Snake Plissken, who's sent to a dystopian New York City prison to rescue the president. One thing that's never explained though is why the hell the president speaks with a weird British accent, and I know that's rich coming from someone with a weird British accent, but whatever. Well, it turns out that actor Donald Pleasance had a slight issue justifying this to himself as well, and decided to come up with his own reason. In his mind, since this version of the future was so bleak, Margaret Thatcher had actually taken over the world, and the US had reverted to being a colony again. Uh, yeah, seems legit, sure. That's not all though, and Pleasance even suggested that his character was actually the love child of Thatcher and Ronald Reagan. The logistics of which, ooh, and I don't even want to think about them, but which would explain why a Brit could be president. While Carpenter was apparently amused with this explanation, he decided to leave this story thread out of the movie. His loss, IMO. At number 7 we've got a double dose of John Carpenter with The Thing. The Doctor was a Russian spy. John Carpenter's horror classic sees 12 men trapped in an arctic base with a ship-shifting alien, which, as it turns out, is absolutely no fun. As is the Carpenter way, though, none of the characters are really given a solid backstory, though they all must be running from something to want to work in a snowy wasteland with an alien for company. The cast then had free reign to craft their characters, and they all came up with unique histories for their parts. Kurt Russell's McCready is an alcoholic Vietnam vet who couldn't find a job anywhere else, while the character of Dr. Cooper was secretly a Russian spy keeping an eye on the American base. Wait, what? Carpenter would only reveal this fact years later, since only he and actor Richard Dysart knew about it. 
The thing doesn't even hint at the Doctor's real nature, outside of maybe his red shirt, which probably makes him the best goddamn spy of all time. As a result, rewatching it with this in mind only adds to the suffocating air of paranoia and also brings a new meaning to the term Cold War. Do you, you get it? Because it's like, because the, the Arctic is really cold, but the Cold War was also going at the time, and like the Cold War, it was Russia in America, and like that's really uh, funny. Uh, sorry? Number six, Near Dark. Jesse has a tragic origin story. Catherine Bigelow's cult horror and best vampire film of all time, in my opinion, stars Bill Paxton and Lance Henriksen as a pair of bloodsuckers who take on a new member into their gang. As per this list, Nia Dark keeps the entire gang's origin a mystery, but Henriksen got so into the character of Jesse, he sketched out a complete biography for him. Consequently, it turns out that Jesse fought in the Confederate Navy and was deeply proud of his roots. During a fierce battle at sea, his ship was pelted with cannon fire, resulting in the death of his crew. The shipwreck washed ashore, and a band of roving harpies boarded to feed off the dead bodies. One of these saw Jesse, who was near death thanks to a chest wound, and took pity on him, so she bit him to turn him into a vampire. Despite how fascinating this is, the only time in the film he talks about his past is when he tells Caleb he fought for the South. We lost is his only comment. Number 5. Harry Potter Dean Thomas is the most tragic Harry Potter character. Unless you're some kind of diehard fan or a cheeky know-it-all, there's a good chance that your first response was, who? when I read out this dude's name. I'm not going to lie, I had to be reminded who he was as well. But when I not only remembered, but also found out his tragic backstory, which sadly made it into neither the books nor the films, I realized that, actually, Dean Thomas is a legend. An utter legend of the crack. Despite having little screen time, he's got one of the most tragic childhoods in a series, well, all about tragic childhoods. See, Dean never knew he was a wizard until he received his Hogwarts letter, and he had no idea his father shared his same gifts. He's always thought he was a muggle-born, and that he didn't really have anything in common with his parents. However, all wasn't as it seemed, and his father was actually courted by the Death Eaters. Refusing their offer, he took off and left his family in order to protect them from any retribution, eventually being killed when Dean was only young. Neither Dean nor his mother knew the truth about him, never understanding the sacrifice he made to keep them safe. Number 4. Kong Skull Island, James Conrad's prior monster encounter. No matter whether you think Kong Skull Island was a worthy entry into WB's monster movie universe or a load of old Godzilla crap, it's no secret that the focus was very much on the monsters and not so much the characters caught in the middle. Yeah, they were likable enough and all the actors did a great job, but they weren't the deepest collection of heroes in a summer blockbuster that year. That was all different in the original script though, and screenwriter Dan Gilroy had actually included pretty extensive backstories for both Brie Larson and Tom Hiddleston's characters that were cut. Originally, Hiddleston was going to be the survivor of a monster his unit encountered just after coming out of Vietnam. In the final film, he's kind of just milling about and has to be convinced to join the expedition, whereas this backstory would have given him the drive to actually seek this creature out in order to get some semblance of revenge and closure. It's not entirely a unique setup, but it certainly would have added stakes to his motivation and added even more mystery to this universe. Number three. Hook. Captain Hook and Smee are more than just good buddies. Hook isn't Spielberg's finest hour, but it's not a total disaster either, and the spirited performances do help you through the movie's rough patches. Dustin Hoffman and Bob Hoskins steal the show as Hook and Smee, but while rehearsing the script, they discovered something interesting. The two characters are obviously devoted to each other, with Smee being the only person Hook confides in. Smee prepares his meals, has access to his private quarters, helps him disrobe, and even gives Hook a kiss in the cheek when he says he wants to die. The actors realized then that, to them, it was obvious the characters were in a relationship, and once that clicked, they played the movie that way. When they told this to Spielberg, he said it was supposed to be a kid's movie, but he didn't dissuade them for playing it however they wanted. So if you've ever watched Hook and thought that their relationship was pretty intimate, now you know exactly why. Number two. Mad Max Fury Road, Coma the Doof Warrior had a rough childhood. Coma the Doof Warrior became an instant hit because of his brief appearance in Fury Road, where he provides an awesome live music show to keep the war boys pumped up. It's what anyone in any job needs. Plus, that flamethrowing guitar is completely badass as well. However, despite all this, he's still a bit of a strange chap, and you probably wouldn't let him near you without at least a police escort. 
Of course, George Miller again drew up a story for this bit character, which isn't even hinted at in the movie. It turns out that Coma was a musical prodigy from a young age and lived happily with his mother until they were both, uh, kidnapped by bandits. Yeah, I see exactly where this is going. His mother was later killed and her head was thrown into Coma's lap. And when Immortal and Joe later found him in a cave, he was still clinging on to this severed head. Joe took pity on him and took him in to lead his war band. And Coma cut the face of his mother's head so he could wear it into battle. What the f ah! Number one, Star Wars The Force Awakens. FN 2199's relationship with Finn. Though stormtroopers have usually been the faceless baddies in the Star Wars movies, J.J. Abrams attempted to peel back the iconic mask in The Force Awakens by giving both Finn and Phasma proper personalities. However, between these two, there was another memorable trooper from J.J.'s movie. This dude, this awesome baton-wielding badass, otherwise known as FN2199. He goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Finn during the Battle of Takadona, but this fight has far more significance if you take into account the background info that sadly didn't make it into the film. Cause it turns out that the two actually knew each other, and were even in the same training squad for years growing up together. Part of the FN team, 2199 went by the nickname Nines, and where Finn eventually refused to follow orders, his former companion eventually complied. Later on, he joined a sort of stormtrooper riot squad, which is why he's using that sick baton in this fight. Consequently, his yell of traitor when he takes on Finn is far more emotionally charged with this in mind and requires a rewatch of The Force Awakens or, say, right this instant. So that's all this. I don't know what you guys think down in the comments below. How many of these backstories did you know and do they completely reshape these movies that we all love so much? Either way, while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh, you've been watching What Culture, and I'll see you soon. Bye.